they wanted these little stupid commodities, right? Um, like I said, this car, it's, it's automatic from 1947, so, you know, it was you know, a pretty high-end car. You know, most people had manual cars. Uh, this automatic car was, you know, a pretty big thing. Um, it's called fluid drive, but it is it is automatic, right? So it's oh fuck, I'm I'm, I'm drifting away. But uh, what I'm going to show you guys now is it has a net meter, and most cars even nowadays they don't have this. So you know, once again, just to show you guys, these cars were way more reliable and better off than these cars that they these pieces of shit on wheels that they make now. There's the amps. It's a net meter. It, base, it tells you how much electricity is being used. There's the oil pressure. It's also mechanical. That's great. And the temperature gauge. Um, it's also mechanical, I believe. Yes, it, uh, I'm pretty sure it is. But anyways, there's the amps. Now, you know, when you're starting the car, that's the, the time that you're going to use up more electricity than anything else. Now just watch when I, there's the uh, key there. And there was a hole here somewhere in the dash for the, uh, for the, yeah, there it is. You see that hole there? I'm pretty certain that that's for the push button. So what I'm thinking is, what really makes sense here is that the person bought this car, right, and they had the, uh, you know, that, and even on the pedal down there, you see there's a hole. There's a hole there. Right, that's where the accelerator went. I put sort of a modern, modern accelerator there because I'm, you know, it's temporary but there's a hole for the uh, for the gas pedal but on top there's another hole so I'm pretty certain that you know that's where the uh, uh, that's where the uh, the starter pedal went right or maybe they just had a push button but as I was saying you know, the person bought the car with that other starter the one the most common and the most reliable one, right? And somewhere along the way, probably, uh, you know, a typical rich wife said, ah, "I don't want to step on the starter. I want to. Uh, I want just. And I don't want to push a button. I want it to do both at the same time. You know, I don't want to push two buttons. I want to push just one button, as if pushing two buttons was too hard. But anyways." So they probably removed that push button, and I still have it here. You know, they set it aside, put it in the dash uh, inside there, All right? And they put that, you know, more expensive starter in that did both things at the same time. But uh, just watch what happens when I turn the key. Just watch that amp meter. Now the batteries, it's supposed to handle, I think, about 100 uh, amps. So, you know, the amp meter here, it's minus 35 to plus 35 if it's charging. Minus 35 if it's, uh, you know, using up more electricity than it's producing, right? Um, but just watch what happens. I'm just going to turn the key. You hear that click. And just watch where it's sitting at 30 so 35 amps there are four marks uh, let's say it was 36 just one amp it's about each each of those little marks corresponds to approximately um, nine amps so right now just by me doing nothing I just turned the key put it on the on position you heard that click the solenoid without doing anything it's using up 18 amps. Okay, that's a lot. And you'll see once again that you know it actually goes all the way up to like minus 30, down to minus 35, pretty much. See there? Look how far it went. So 
you know, it's not supposed to do that because I'm not, you know, I'm not actually engaging the solenoid. I'm just, you know, turning the key to the on position. So, watch what happens now if I actually crank the car. Just listen to that grinding. It's actually, apparently it's using less energy when it's cranking and more energy when it's not cranking. Watch that. When it's not cranking, it's actually going closer to zero. Look. Off. And you hear that click? Oops, my bad. So, you know... We definitely have a problem. I'm pretty sure there's a problem right there. Okay. Um, the next step, I'm going to remove the starter. I'm just going to study it. There are pretty good diagrams on the uh, manual, but it's they're kind of small and you know it's not a lot of detail. I'm just going to study what's happening. Um, and see what I can do but what I might do is I might just remove the solenoid all the wiring just put a shift lever a lot simpler uh, you know better in all aspects but uh, just there you see we're just using 18 amps by doing nothing so that's gonna discharge the battery really quickly so Yeah, there it is. Um, this, I'll, I'll just end this video at 10 minutes or maybe 9. Just show you around the DeSoto here. There's a dash. There's a DeSoto symbol there. Steering wheel has lots of cracks, unfortunately. There you have DeSoto. Oh, yeah, one more thing. What I did is I actually remove the 6 volt battery and I put a, a 12 volt battery in and I was thinking that that would uh, you know 12 volts on a 6 volt starter it would make it spin really fast but it actually got worse you know with the 12 volt battery in the uh, starter would literally just just move the fan that much and it would stop and you definitely don't want to hold it in that position for really long so um, I could possibly be that we have, you know, either faulty wiring there. I don't think my wiring is wrong because it's exactly the same as the manual. But sometimes on the manual, they uh, make a diagram and the actual part is different than the diagram. So, for example, the, the, the uh, if you look at the, the uh, generator on the... Um, on the uh, on the manual, it's uh, showing the. Uh, I'll show you in just a second. You see how the uh, position here, the uh, two uh, terminals here, they actually side to side. Um, how can I say this? They're they're not in line with this line here. Right, but on the uh, manual they are so. The uh, the other terminal it would be like here, right? It'd be uh, par in parallel with the uh, center line here of the uh, of the uh, generator, and on the uh, manual it isn't. So sometimes you know you can't really follow things exactly like the manual says, right? Uh, and I did have to open the uh, starter up here. And as you can see, there's no markings. There's supposed to be an A and an F marking, and there isn't. There's an A here, but that's because I, I, I carved it with a chisel, okay? So, you know, I mean, you see, they, 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 there's always little fuck-ups, you know, here and there. Even back then, even with these really good cars, you know, they're hundreds of millions of light years better than these junk on wheels that they make now but still it's not 100% perfect and that's what 
you see there, there's no labeling of the terminals right I mean one is bigger and the other one is smaller so you'd, you'd, the, you'd use that as a reference but I mean you know the manual doesn't say put a bigger one or a smaller one it says you know A and F for armature which stands for armature and field so you know there are these little you know fuck ups but so in the case of the starter it might be that I have the wire in the wrong place I very very much doubt it but it you know it's a possibility that I switched the ignition switch and the, uh, the ground terminal right so it could be um, I'll have to look look around but you know if, even if it is it's not my fault because that's how the manual shows it right top right corner the wire from the top right corner goes to the uh, ignition switch the, the one on the top left corner which is another one of the small ones once again there's two big ones and two smaller ones the one on the top left is the ground terminal which goes to the uh, to the uh, to the field terminal on the uh, generator right so what I'm really thinking is that that one of the coils there since it's about 18 amps I'm thinking that it's the uh, smaller coil it's uh, it's got a problem on it it's damaged right, and once again you know the uh, so what happens is what I'm thinking is that when you're when I'm cranking the engine it's you know using up a lot more electricity through that leakage you know so well, hopefully it's just that solenoid and I just replace it you know with the uh, just remove it or replace it with either you know the single terminal uh, with the push button the single terminal or a uh, foot pedal right so I really love the foot pedal um, so either do that or and by the way the starter on the field I actually opened the whole thing up inside um, and it's not the field coils remember there's coils inside that's what a motor is right it's a motor there's coils and it's not actually round wire it's actually thick you know um, what's it called uh, thick like plate steel or I can't remember if it was steel or copper I think it was copper but it's like rectangular it's flat it's not round wire it's flat so it's pretty pretty indestructible so I'm really really confident that you know the uh, the motor itself is working 100% because I opened that and, and between right there's they, they go around and around those coils this case, in this case, it's like flat, uh, really flat, you know, uh, rectangular uh, wire. It's rectangular, really thick rectangular wire. It's like five millimeters thick or something, or maybe a little more. Five millimeter thick by, I think it was uh, eight millimeter wide, something like that. But anyways. So they go around each other. Now they have to be insulated, right? So between them, there's like a, uh, uh, I think it was rubber. It was black. Uh, it's probably not cotton. Not not um, uh, it's not um fabric. I'm pretty sure it's like either, it's some sort of rubber there. And what I also did is I I wrapped uh, uh electric you know you know cheap common black electrical tape around those coils and uh, most coils already come that way but this one didn't come that way uh, so I just did that just to, to make sure you know there's no shit and no dirt uh, getting in there and that it's not supposed those, those coils are not supposed to touch the uh, case you know the housing of the starter right so I just added that in and I also added a uh, a uh, big piece of uh, rubber around the uh, just an extra layer of insulation around the, uh, the the terminals on the starter. So, but I'm just gonna open it up and uh, maybe it's just the wiring that's you know switched switched around because of the uh, 
bad, you know, diagram on the uh, manual. Nothing compared to nowadays, guys. Just, just to be clear on that. Nowadays, you know, just read the car manual. It literally just tells you nothing. Absolutely nothing. It just tells you maybe how to operate, you know, a, a Bluetooth or you know, radio or some some silly shit like that. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Whereas the manual back then literally showed you everything on the car. I know there's still little little fucks up, fuck ups here and there, but um, I mean I guess they were perfect, right? Like me. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so either they fucked up on the diagram. If it's just that, then I just have to switch those two terminals around. But if not, like I said, I guess I'm repeating myself here. Um, just converting to uh, one other another uh, starter altogether. I actually bought another one for thirty dollars. <laughs> Believe it or not, I had to pay like thirty thirty three for shipping and another ten bucks for import charges. So you know, <laughs> still a pretty good deal, you know. But I mean, it's actually if I was, you know, if if I was, if it was a local pickup, you know, because I live sort of far away from civilization here. If it was a little closer to civilization, it would literally just be thirty bucks for a new starter for a 1947 DeSoto. That's unbelievable, right? But this starter that I bought, I'm not actually sure if it'll fit this car. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, apparently, from what I hear. Most of the Chrysler products back then they did interchange, right? And uh, this, the generator here is a typical example of that. So, but uh, basically, it, it was a pretty, it was a brand new starter, by the way. Well, not brand new, but you know, remanufactured. So, <laughs> 30 bucks it was a pretty good deal. I said, well, uh, I'll buy it just in case, and you know, if it doesn't work, maybe I can just use the uh, the housing and you know, you know, like switch the parts or um, something with it or study it or whatever, you know. Um, the part number for this st start is it's an Autolite starter and they have two part numbers. One is the Chrysler part number. The other one is the Autolite part, part number. The Autolite part number in this case it's MAW4025. Once so again, MAW4025, just in case you have something similar to this. Um, and the Chrysler part number, let me just see it here. It looks like S70148, something like that. I'll confirm uh, later on. But anyways... Um, I think we're about finished here. Anything else I should mention? Um, so yeah, basically, just when you're just test the starter, just two different, uh, two different parts, right? The starter motor and the uh, starter uh, solenoid. Uh, after after the 50s, I, th I think all cars, pretty much all of them, switched to the solenoids. Um, the solenoid usually is the weakest part because, like I said, I mean I'm gonna say it's always the weakest part because, like I said, the uh, the coils inside are pretty thick, wide, and they're usually well insulated, well protected from from you know water and all that. Water is a big enemy of electricity, guys. Um, you get water and it starts to rust. It starts to wear out the, uh, you know, corrode terminals, corrode wires. Even if it's copper, copper does corrode. Um, it doesn't rust, but it does corrode. You'll see that green, you know, some green and white stuff on copper. Right? It, if it doesn't corrode the copper, it corrodes the, uh, the wire, so... But I think that's, that's pretty much it. I'll get back to you. Uh, probably do a video with the uh, disassembly of the uh, starter. So there it is. Bye-bye.